Lisa's getting the full agenda out to everybody with all the numbers in it, and um, we can go ahead with the uh, approving the minutes if people want to do that. Um, Bob had mentioned earlier that we do not have the meetings for the uh, Germain Scholarship uh, on the agenda at this point. I'm not sure whether you even got them. Um, well, I, sent them I think out. you did. I, I, I yeah. Took oh, the right, you and... did. Yeah. But we could do that but next that, week. Yeah, that 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 should be fine. So so yeah, um, uh, Phil and Bob, who were here, probably can take care of the uh, the minutes from the last meeting. So Phil, I'll I'll second your motion. All right. And I'll say aye. Aye, aye. Yes, aye. There you go. So which minutes are we approving from the last? The twentieth yeah, and. 22nd and 29th. 22nd and okay. 9th. Yeah. I'm actually looking at the right, right documents. Yeah. Um, I do, do either, does anyone want to talk about meetings attended by select board members? Uh, sure, I will. There was uh, lots going on in the, uh, um, your Union 38 teacher negotiation front. So, um, um, and actually just email from this morning could make a, uh, a, 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 an executive session meeting on, on, on late notice really, really useful for tonight if you want to spend a couple of minutes on it. Um, but um, it's just contract negotiations and we, the, the, yeah, I can't really say more than that. Um, Would we have to go into executive session for that? Yeah, just based on the email I received this morning. So, um, oh shit, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, can we do that without it being in the agenda? Yeah, you can if it's on 48 hour notice. Um, if if it's hey. um, if it, um, it's something that if something that arose within the past 48 hours. So, that was all stuff that's that came up from Sunday to Monday. And uh, is, is there any time sensitivity to it? Yeah, because um, there's a meeting Thursday that it would get voted to put on the agenda for the joint school committee, which is coming up next Tuesday. And so if there is a position for the school for the Conway Select Board to take on it, then uh, it really would have to be given tonight. Um, yeah, yeah. So, sounds good. So we'll put that on at the end of the meeting. Okay. And it'll all make sense to you once. I mean, it's just it's just contract negotiation stuff. I mean, like you can't talk about it in public. Right. Great. The only meeting I had this week was our select board meeting. Yeah, that too. On the yeah. on the scholarship. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, okay. Not not seeing. Uh, Lisa's uh, new uh, numbers for the um, for the warrants in yet. Um, uh, why don't you guys uh, nominate somebody for or nominate yourself for uh, chair of the select board? I nominate Bob Armstrong. Uh, I'm willing to do it. Sure. <laughs> Is that my second? So, <laughs> so there you go. Yes. So. <laughs> so. All in favor of Bob Armstrong, say aye. 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 Aye, I guess. Thank you. Congratulations, Bob. Uh, so, yeah, as far Bob, as I can tell, a being, year. this is going to be a terrible year to be a chairperson. I but, think so. That's yeah. okay. Oh, just the finances. Once we once we figure once we find out how bad they are, they're going to be bad. Oh, well. The revenue side from the state is going to be bad. So yeah. that's what I. That's the only thing I mean by that. Um, I, I don't see that being chair is going to make it worse for me than for all, uh, uh, than either of you guys either. Um, I, I'll yeah. just have, you know, I read the minutes. Uh, I well, read the agenda, so. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, reading the minutes, uh, there is another position on the chair, which uh, we, we've gotten out of doing, but we might want to bring it back. The clerk of the select board uh, typically officially submits the minutes. Um, you know, they, they'd, they'd be drafted, um, but they would be submitted by, by somebody else who, who might look at them actually before the meeting and, 
and uh, um, you know, go over if there's any if there's any questions or comments. If somebody wants to take on that role, uh, we can elect a clerk who would who would also more or less be the second um, second. Uh, mm -hmm you know, uh, uh, in case the chair wasn't there or something like that. I don't know if you want to even have that office or not. We, so, we haven't used it. Who does that now? Who takes the minutes and prepares them? And Lisa. Lisa, okay. Uh, I think we have had a chair, a clerk in the past. And before me, it, for a while, it was Bob Baker. And I think I became the clerk after Bob left. And I don't think either of us ever did anything. <laughs> So. Yeah, I, I'd be willing to do that just because I spent, I, I always have, I mean, I, I read the minutes carefully already, so it's something I already do. Um, and uh, Great. It, it, makes, it yeah. makes sense, Bob, it makes sense, Bob, just in case you do decide to do the uh, solo around the world yacht race, you know. Uh, no plans. <laughs> so so uh, a nomination would be in order. So, so I'll nominate Phil for the for the clerk uh, of the select board i'll second that all right excellent One favor there you go aye aye unanimous okay thanks tom yeah hi, Lisa. Yes. hey um so i sent the numbers in an email I couldn't send, I couldn't edit the agenda because it came to me as a PDF. So. Okay, I, yeah, I, I see the numbers here. Okay, good. Did everybody else get the numbers? Yeah. So, so let me I'll read the numbers now, now that I'm, my role as chair and reading the agenda. Okay. So we need to approve the uh, the warrants. Uh, the vendor warrant is ninety thousand six seventy three and eighty seven cents. Uh, the vendor warrant for twenty one is two twenty three three ninety four and forty one cents. The payroll deduction warrant for twenty one is twenty four thousand seven eighty five and seventy cents, and the payroll warrant for twenty one is. One hundred and five thousand six hundred and eighty thousand six hundred eighty dollars and ten cents. And Lisa did send along the uh, the details for those warrants in the in the in mail that we should have gotten. Yeah. Can I I just ask a question because I'm totally new here. Yeah. What, what is the difference between payroll deduction warrant and payroll warrant? Good the payroll deduction warrant includes all of the uh, pension money, the health benefit money that gets taken out of someone's paycheck. Some towns don't bother separating them. Conway has traditionally separated them. Um, and then another question, because I looked at the, um, the the vendor warrant for FY20 was had a lot more, I, I assume because the vendor warrant for 21 has not, that's just estimated. Um, but there were there were like line items that had individual people's names attached to them. Um, is that a situation where like someone like buys something on behalf of the town and then submits paperwork for reimbursement? Typically, yes. Okay. It it could also be a sole proprietor um, vendor. Okay. That's a, uh, that was my question. Great. <laughs> So um, I, I, I'll move that we uh, that we approve those warrants. Yeah, I I I'll second that, and I I would also like to once again uh, relay my appreciation to uh, to Michael for getting them out. The two two o'clock two o'clock made them uh, easier to read. So good, thanks. Yes. I, I will express that uh, your your thanks to him. Yes. So, all in favor? Phil, you're saying aye. Yes. Erica, you say aye. Aye. And I'll say aye. So it's unanimous. Um, are there is there any public join the meeting yet? Public comments? Uh, I don't see anyone. There, since 
Um, since all these meetings have been remote, has there it has there been public? Who've joined? Okay. Yeah, right. it depended upon the meeting, but yes. Especially when we were talking about the forests and about the forestry plan, um, mm -hmm. talking about you know climate change kind of things, or uh, you, you know there were sometimes there were fifteen people on the meeting. Oh wow! Okay. And <coughs> yes, the school committee, the frontier school committee meeting um, last time had almost a hundred members of the public on it on Zoom. Uh, yeah, we're lucky. <laughs> When the meetings are boring, nobody calls in. Well, it's nice to see people engaged. Yeah. That's one way to look at it. That's a healthy way to look at it. Okay, old business. So, Tom, I know that you said we got a document about this, but I never could. End of your yeah, transfers it, it, between accounts. Yeah, that, that's the one you, that you thought it was. Okay. So does everybody have that? Let me uh, find it again. Nine. I it. At the top, it said Town of Conway, potential FY20 deficits. Yes. So it had a, a list of, uh, well, could you explain it, Tom? Yes. Um, Conway has, has usually not ended up with this uh, at the end of the year. It's not uncommon. Uh, though for there to be small overruns, small deficits in accounts. And what the town has to do is make up for that at the end of the year uh, by transferring money from some account that has a lot of money in it. And this year we have a lot of money in our snow and ice account because we didn't have a lot of snow or ice this year. Um, so what I've been proposing is to uh, use that snow and ice account to pay for all of the um, all of the overages that, that we have uh, they, they get taken out one way or the other but it's best to do it within the previous year's operating budget that's um, that's very handy to do that um, so that on the said, notice that there, go ahead um, the um, on the state assessments, those are those are for um, schools, um, and the, uh, the or, or the, the the big one is twenty three thousand dollars, and I would advise not um, doing anything with that. Um, we can we can change that later, uh, so I would say let's not. Uh, address that now. Um, besides that, we don't have that much money in the uh, in the snow and ice to actually take care of that one. Um, we have more than enough for all the rest. Um, so I also I also sent out the um, the details for for each of these for the um, so that you could take a look and see what. Um, what some of the charges were. Um, not sure whether anybody bothered to do that. Yeah, I, I took a look at that, Tom. I thought, I, and I uh, thought that was useful. I did hear today that uh, of a fresh uh, overage in a department that uh, that hadn't made it onto your list, though. So, and I don't know if Chief Baker caught up with you today. Um, he didn't, but I believe he caught up with Mike. Okay. Um, and so I didn't, there, I didn't see, there, there's, there, there's different kinds of overages that it might be, and it, and I don't know whether that was an encumbrance or an actual deficit. Um, if if so, I I don't know that now. Now here's the thing: if we don't do any of this, 
it'll all be taken care of anyway. It'll just be taken, it'll just become part of next year's tax rate. Um, and again, with, with the schools, it's a slightly different system. Uh, and that comes out of the cherry sheet usually. Right. So it, it's not like, um, it's not like this is a, a do or die situation, but it certainly is a best practice to take care of as many things as we have. Now, I don't know why, um, why this wouldn't have come up earlier with, um, with the fire. And if we don't know how much it is, then we can't vote it anyway. Yeah, I did. Did, I did he know. give you, a, yeah, I you did got know. a so, figure? So the, the, the total overage is 3,000. It was based on the um, equipment repair line item that he had budgeted at 8,000 something. And the actual number was 17,800 something. And he was able to make a, additional adjustments so that the, so that the overage is just down to 3,000, but it was 3,000 on the nose, I believe. Okay, well that, that's easy to vote and that easily comes within the ice and snow budget too. Yeah. So we, we can add that. Yeah, your total there ended up twenty nine one seventy one for the current deficit, sixty three cents. Yes, and and if we take out the state which you just proposed, that comes to fifty eight thirty five sixty three. Okay. And and so do we have enough to add three thousand to that, and we could vote in that much to take care of that oh, yeah. from last year's budget? From last year's snow and ice account, yeah. yeah. So my, um, my other question about this, Tom, was um, yeah. what, is, isn't this traditionally an area that the uh, Finance Committee weighs in on? Uh, they also have a vote, yes. They, they, they will have to vote this as well. Um, and if they don't vote it, then it doesn't go through. But um, I mean, the, the real reason to, you know, one of the reasons to do this is to, is to look at why this is happening. And, um, you know, I think that the 382 in the select board salaries and, and wages was just a miss. I don't think that ought to be there because that's not in, um, that's under hourly or clerical wages. And, and I don't think there's $382. I mean, we, we don't have a clerical, we don't spend clerical money under the select board. So I think that was just a miss posting on the accountant's part. Um, and the, um, the uh, select board general expense, uh, that had to do with a computer for Jan that we went back and forth with between Jan and Roy and me. And um, between Jan and Roy, they suggested that it come from somewhere else um, other than the IT budget because Roy had, had his, his plan for, for buying IT equipment. Um, and for one reason or another, we landed on the select board. It doesn't really matter. It could be under mine, it could be under yours, but that's what it's for, was for a new computer for Jan. Um, the assessors, Lee was going back and forth with Mike, I think until, you know, just a couple of days ago because she had different numbers. So that might also be an accountant posting issue for, for where the assessors are getting uh, assessed. They, they have accounts for revaluation, which are separate from their operating budget account, because that gets voted as a special article at town meeting. And Lee believes that some things were charged to their operating budget that should have been charged to revaluation. So that's kind of a, um, again, it, it's, it's more of an accounting issue. Uh, then there's three um, COVID 19 expenses um, and those are reimbursable so that's not a bad deal uh, I filed for one reimbursement for FY 20 stuff but I had to get that in in early June so uh, we we just have to file again by the end of the calendar year to get reimbursements for the others so those will come back um, I I do not know what the $924 for the Vogue Tech School school was for the assessments. Um, 
and that's usually we come in pretty close on the nose on that. Um, so I, I, you know, we 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 could take the time now to look at the um, at the project details to figure out exactly what that was. That would be, you know, reasonable. It, it it's not a huge amount, and you know, they're they're all good about what they charge us. So I just don't know why there's a deficit in there. Um, I, I, it could be transportation related. I'm not sure because uh, we haven't, but, but again, that, that will be in the, um, in the detail sheets if people want to want to look at that. So that deficit um, means that we were charged more than we had budgeted for FY20? Yes. And you know, so we 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 budgeted one hundred and fifty one four hundred sixty eight dollars, and that was nine hundred and twenty four dollars short for some reason. So it's it's not a lot. It's out of one hundred and fifty one thousand, um, but it's not a little either. Um, you know, and um, you know, if 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 people are interested, I mean, I, I was going to do it couldn't get around to it today there was too much work to catch up on but um, you know I'll, I'll be happy to find out yeah I'm, more about I'm these that, expenses I'm that just because this this past year I mean of all of the schools in this area they are the most transportation to but like budget wise transportation is such a huge part of their budget and they didn't they got paid for services that they didn't have to render to the tune of over you know thousands a day yeah um, so yeah. the, the idea that we would get charged something extra beyond what we had budgeted seems, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd be interested well, to see what well, happened. Yeah. Yes. Well, and, and I, yeah, I'll be happy to get, um, that figure in particular for everybody. Do we have to do this this week or, I mean, because it's the end of the year or yes. do we wait till next week? So, so what we can do is, you know, if, if this comes up, it's something that we can, we can bring up during the budget hearing next year and say, you know, what was up with that. Now, I know that was a state policy or at least, I mean, it wasn't a law, but I know it was a state policy that Desi was, was telling people to pay their contracts. Um, and I don't know if that's because they didn't want to get into contract litigation or whether they wanted to support the economy or didn't want the school buses to go out of business, which, you know, could conceivably have happened with with some of the school bus companies, small ones that you know we were using out of out of Deerfield. Um, so um, I'm not, and, and yeah, you you, know, you can see where I'm kind of hedging on that, Phil, for how much it was the the school's fault. But well, uh, I, but I yeah, I, I agree. It's it's definitely something to bring up. Every school with every bus company in the state has sort of had these conversations and it didn't go 100% for either one, but there's some, there's, there's, there's a sweet spot in the middle where you're keeping the, the, the necessary company in business, but you're also getting some money back for the taxpayers for services that were paid for, but not, not rendered. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and and I uh, I apologize for not having um, having looked at that figure in particular. Uh, oh, hang on. Um, that's actually not that. That's a state assessment for. Um, I, I do see that. I I have something in front of me here that's not the detail, but it's the uh, it's at least by project. And um, so eight, but eight twenty, it has a lot of different things in it, um, including school choice assessments. So I actually, so for one reason, it has to do with the state assessment for vocational and technical schools. Um, so it's it's not the school billing us itself, it's a state assessment. So at least I could figure that out. They do get the special revenue streams that nobody else gets. It's kind of unfair. 
all, all the reasons we shouldn't pay it. But, uh, but I mean, I yeah. feel like we're obligated to pay it. Well, if we don't, it again, it just gets taken out of our, basically out of next year's free cash or, you know, a, a similar mechanism where, where the state and gets it anyway. And by out of the ICE budget, <laughs> it's out of the free cash anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It, um, we, we, we make out better if we deal with it within our own operating. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so what, yeah, is, it, what is this? Report? Come back. The ice and snow budget for FY20. It's um, it's about twenty one thousand. Let me just check that. It's it's four twenty three is the account number. Uh, twenty one thousand six hundred fifty two. And if so, if we were to cover these deficits with that budget, then what happens to the rest? It just goes back into the general fund. Yeah, and and turns into uh, free cash for next year. Which which was Bob's comment about you know it comes out of free cash one way or the other more or less. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Tom, why is it advantageous to do it now as opposed to do it later? Because now we can, it's better for the town books. We, 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 we can leave with a clean set of books and not get whacked by the state for not having paid attention to our budget. And you said we don't need it, to do it, the state assessments, the 23,000 at the end. We, that one is easily postponed? Well, um, Mike's note on that is that DOR allows assessments to run a deficit um, because they can change later after the tax recap. Um, and, and Bob Baker has a $3,000 assessment on top of these numbers? Yeah, so that would be 8,835 and 63 according to your calculations. Yeah. So it just in terms of just process, because the finance committee has to vote on this too, doesn't it make sense to do just the joint committee next week and just decide this vote on this together? If you want to have a meeting next week, I thought you were saying uh, that we, we had yeah. to have the, you know. I don't know. I'm asking. We, I don't know. We could have the executive session next week too, but if you don't want a meeting next week, um, uh, Erica, typically we move on to a every other week schedule un, until uh, December or so for the budget meetings. And and I must say that we are due for our every other week schedule to commence. We really we <laughs> like so like for real for real. So I'll let you read on this because I'm very new. So I'm so, gonna. So Phil, what do you think about just paying the eighty-eight thirty-five sixty-three out of ice and snow and letting the school, uh, the, the other one ride. I, the, the, those seems like sensible suggestions to me. I do wish that we would have had the, the finance committee on this call. I'm, I'm just nervous about them not being included and uh, them possibly voting no or having a difference of opinion. And, you know, and then that, that means we got to do it together anyway. I, so they can do it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I hope to, I hope to be at their meeting. And by then, I'll have the uh, details on the uh, state assessments and the, the, the tech school assessment. And, so, and if they don't, you know, we just, get, we just get charged by the state. And any or, one of or, you know, we can attend. It goes against next year's taxes is what happens. It goes on to next year's tax rate as an expense. And then, you know, my, my question about the, the, the $23,000 school expense is just, you know, that is 1% of our grammar school budget. Um, yeah, and, and that's not just the school. Um, right. Again, that, that's, right. all, that's all state assessments. It's, uh, yeah. we got our, uh, oh, but, but it, it, it comes from school choice, as you probably know. It's our school choice assessment that's causing 
that line item to be over because we're down forty two thousand dollars so it's it's because of students who are not attending conway grammar school or frontier that's what that expense is when you say it's a school choice expense it, it's a school choice assessment from the state and our assessment is way over our total budget the 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 whole line item the whole 820 line item has a whole bunch of things in it but the only one with a deficit is the school choice assessment but again yeah. these are state yeah. assessments the school choice is for the kids that is for kids k through 12 that are going to other school other public schools okay um not the charter schools this is this is the kids that are going to mohawk or smith or uh, uh but so if we're seeing it at the town level, doesn't this mean grammar school? Yes. Yeah, that's the high yes. school would be just part of the high school budget. Right. Are there right. really people in Conway who are not sending their kids to the Conway Grammar School? Yeah, there are. There's kids, there's, there's people in Conway that teach at the Greenfield Center School and have their kids go there and they go to they teach it where, you know, where, and it's one of those, um, they, they, yeah. Yeah, and it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of an amount because the state only gives five, a little over $5,000 per kid for school choice. So that's what they assess the towns. Um, and we make out, you know, we make out, you know, we, we, we basically have had to close off school choice applications for the most part. Just, we're, capped so um so yeah i'm i'm okay with the plan to do to, to let that go so 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 i'll make a motion that we we uh transfer 88 35 63 from the ice and snow budget to cover these uh fy 20 deficits and yeah. and the rest of them the state assessments you know I'll hope that we can get a better explanation. I'll second that. Aye, aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. So if that makes our look better in the eyes of the state, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's all the same in the end. Tom, are you going to give us a report on reopening? Well, my only report is that I did send out the uh, a draft reopening plan to department heads. Uh, I got two enthusiastic yeses and deafening silence from everybody else. I think if there were, people really had a problem with it, they would have let me know. Now, that plan does maintain staggered hours. And so th the same staff schedule that we have now, but it would open town buildings up to residents if they wore masks and I got to plaster the place with posters and um, you know tell everybody to wash their hands there's some staff training involved which is really I think everybody's been doing it pretty well here anyway so I think it's it's completely doable um, uh, also the, the Board of Health um, I'm gonna have to uh, work with them to do it so it's I, I can't just pull the trigger right now but um, if that sounds good to you I'll go ahead and um, and and start that in motion and and we'll just see when you know when it can happen and right now it's more of a question of practicalities but it seems as though we're ready to start um, you know having some public access yeah, I, I agree with all that. I, I remember, you know, from, from your plan, the one thing that I kind of have realized in the week since I saw your plan was that um, we could use a couple of big signs for just the front doors, right when people are about to turn the handle to walk in. And Oh, yeah. Be, because the signs, I thought that the signs that are there now were adequate. I mean, I look at signs, but <laughs> I, I was there twice last yeah. week, but both times people just plowed through there without seeing those signs. And 
and and when and both times when they were told um you know you in a very polite nice way by the uh, employee that you know you're doing it wrong um they were really upset that they were doing it wrong they didn't want to be doing it wrong you know and they wanted to be doing it right but they didn't see the sign so uh that's my two cents yeah on that. Oh yes, I, I think that there there will be a, a certain a certain number of people who don't see signs, yeah. and we just have to. I mean, that's part of the staff training is to say, "Hi, here's a mask. Please put it on." You know, and we have a small supply here if we need them. Tom, can you can you identify what offices are going to be impacted? I mean, will it mean? that people will come into the clerk's office through the front door instead of the back or, or, or uh, no, or the, the plan has people entering the town clerk's office through the back door. Um, with the exception of course, of anybody who's uh, handicapped, the, the accessible entrance is in the front of the town office. Yeah. The town yep. hall is accessible and actually has an accessible bathroom now too. Um, so, we just need to work on, um, again, making staff comfortable with having people come in again and, um, you know, establishing boundaries is really what it's about. So Lee will start having her office hours over in town hall. Well, yeah, now it, it'll probably mainly be Laura over there. Um, Lee, as you know, is uh, vulnerable. Yeah. Lance is yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. Um, Lee's husband, Lance, is yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. So uh, she's been working almost completely remotely or when no one's in the office, when it's not open to the public. She goes in in the evenings. Uh, so she would probably uh, she would probably do that. It, it's like everybody needs their own personal plan, which is one of it's been one of the difficulties because everybody has different levels of sensitivity and people living in their house and they all want to, you know, we were a great success story in Conway and people want to keep it that way. So, and, it, you know, especially when we can see what happens when, you know, out in the, in the South and the West, when people have started relaxing their vigilance, uh, vigilance, it's, it's not a pretty sight. So, uh, it's still very much in people's minds. So a whole lot of this is persuading staff that it's okay to open. And a large part of that is continuing remote work when we can. And I think Lee's going to be one of those people who just yeah. is not available. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe by a point. Sorry. I can imagine the conservation commission, you know, it's only a few people on the commission and we might have one or two people come in and visit us and and it would be much better for them to be able to bring in their drawings and talk in person. Sure. And the general purpose room is set up for meetings. Um, there are eight foot tables with chairs on either end, six feet apart. There are six tables and the uh, conference call phone there has four microphones. That can, that can be just taken out and put in front of people. So they're completely mobile. It just has to be wiped down afterwards. Yeah. So the, yeah. Um, we are set up to have in-person meetings if we want them with people attending on a conference line too. So uh, we, we are set to move forward with that. Great. It sounds like it's going to be on a committee by committee or a, or a, you know, department by department basis. Yeah, I'm hoping to have it uh, more together than apart in terms of town offices are open, but, you know, that kind of thing. So I, 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 um, I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping it can be sufficiently coordinated so that we move from being completely closed to being partially open within a week anyway, or a couple of weeks at most. Um, but again, a lot of this is negotiation with individuals. So, yeah. um, 
It'll be more anyway. That's partially open. Right. Um, it, it we'll 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 need to you know have very clear hours posted everywhere for who's available when. Uh, right. You know, it, it's in a way people are almost more more accessible now because everybody's accessible by email and phone anyway. So um, that's, um, I, I'm hoping that it's not confusing for people. I know that it will be inevitably for some, but we'll do all we can to, uh, to make it clear. Compared to, the, compared to the schools, it's a walk in the park. The, <laughs> yeah. The, oh. The, the oh. The frontier, the frontier planning document that just establishes the committees and the membership in those committees and the jurisdiction of those committees, each part, each part of the uh, 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 of the whole process is three or four times as long as our entire reopening plan. You gotta love process, Phil. Oh my God. And it's you not gotta love Darius. Not there, there's there's uh, there's so many parents upset that there's not parents included in all in every committee. Yes. Um. Mm. So we have no new business. I do not have any except we're gonna on Phil's request um, uh, move into an executive session not anticipated 48 hours. Uh, before the meeting and which we need to do because of uh, timely considerations, especially considering that we won't be meeting for two weeks. So we usually do that at the end of the meeting and we can almost pretend that we're there. But uh, other than yeah, I, that, I, is there anything not anticipated? Um, no, no, I've, I've just got a couple of uh, update items. Great. Um, is that uh, Community Action is offering assistance in paying rent and utilities for lower income families who are experiencing economic distress from COVID-19. Uh, there's a phone number, 475-1570, that'll make it into the minutes. Um, for a two-person household, that would be a gross monthly income of $5,445. Um, and they have they have income guidelines for one person, two, three, four, you know, five people, families. Uh, but that gives you an idea that uh, you know it's it's for lower income people who are in economic distress. So that's help with uh, rent and utilities. Will that be on the and, webpage? Uh, we can put it up there, sure. Um, and also the uh, the U.S. Census has requested, I think I might have mentioned this before, uh, requested the use of municipal facilities and uh, they will be training a small number of people in the general purpose room from July 21st through the 25th. That's a Tuesday through Saturday and also on August 3rd. So we get, um, we get to work with the feds here. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, to that's all. They apparently have like a forty or fifty his year history of using that room. So that'll be great. Well, I'm I'm happy to uh, to continue that process and promote their work. Yep. That encourages them to hire more Conway folks too. I'm they I'm sure they would love as many people. people as many people as they can get. It's yeah. not an easy time for them. So concerns, you have any concerns, Phil? Eric, any concerns? So I, I, I did get, um, I, don't, I don't know if he uh, for, sent in a formal request, but I did, I did hear of a new volunteer for the Finance Committee. So and a sterling recruit, I might add. So, uh, this I, I have not had a chance to talk with Lori since I got back, but I did notice um, that uh, Mr. James Recor had gotten a substantial number of votes for moderator. And to me, that means that uh, he has actually won that position. 
and that. therefore is the person who uh, would make those appointments. So I would yep. forward the, yep. any names you know to uh, to Mr. Recor. Yep. Um, I, I'm kind of assuming that he won and that he wants to accept. Now, um, that, last part, that last part I haven't heard. I, yes, I, I've heard informally from him that he's very excited to have won and he's looking forward to serving the town. But I don't know that he's been sworn in, but I do know that he just reached out to me. Um, Jim serves as moderator for the pre-town meeting every year and does a really good job. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know if he's been sworn in, but he definitely, from all appearances, um, is totally planning to fill those shoes. Great. So, so uh, yeah, we, we, we should wait until he is um, actually moderator and all the, uh, the I's crossed and the T's dotted okay. before, uh, before having him take on any official acts. Um, yeah, that's with that good. caveat, excellent. That's So does that fall on someone to reach? Like, I mean, I just knew that I should probably go down to town hall and get sworn in. Does that fall on any one person? So like, if someone wins an election, like, who reaches out to the person and says, "This is what you do"? The, the town clerk sends a letter out. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's probably polite for someone to give him a call and to say, "Hey, you won. You want to do it? You got to get sworn in." Take your ethics well, test. Yeah. Were, apparently, they got it wrong, and they said that he was elected tree warden. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, the recorder was notified about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think we have a tree warden. There are. <laughs> Happy one. So the next item on the agenda is mail. Now, I, I I didn't get any for you guys through here. Okay, um, I don't know uh, that. Don't know. That said, because um, Eric is new here, uh, there's a box here that I normally keep all the select board materials in, and it has a couple of mail folders in it, and one of them is mail folders which are kind of substantial, and one of them are mail folders which no one really needs to waste time on. And among those, I include all of the notifications we get from Comcast as to programming changes. Uh, um, because we get one of those every two or three weeks, something like that. And, you know, well, showtime is going to be changing to 8 p.m. on, you know, so I figure that uh, if people really want to look at those, they can go into that back folder and look at everything we've gotten that really isn't. Um, really doesn't take any thought or deliberation or isn't even of general interest necessarily. So um, we did get one of those. That, that's why I'm thinking of it right now. But we get those not infrequently. And I always tell people, there's a place for them here. Please you know, come in, look through the mail folder anytime you like. Um, but I don't, I don't believe we have anything. Actually, I'll just go over right now, but I don't think we have anything substantive right now. I think Comcast does an adequate job notifying everybody by the stuff you get in your email. Yeah, it's the same thing. If, if you're a subscriber, you get it anyway. So yeah, and, and there, there's nothing in the, uh, in the folder now. So announcements. Anybody have an announcement? No. My announcement is I am looking forward to our summer schedule, our summer meeting schedule. <laughs> soon, Phil, soon. Uh, so, the, so the next one is to plan our next meeting, which, which means we will vote on whether we want to go every other week. Aye. And so I'll say that's a second, and I vote aye, too. Aye. OK. Thank you. <laughs> so this, what was in the agenda was assuming that was going to happen, but it just did. Thank you. 
So before we adjourn, you know, I, I'll just note that our two, our, our every other week break is not going to last anywhere near the way. I mean, once we get those budget numbers, it's going to be all just a budget all over again. We we'll look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> So I propose that we go into executive session and we will adjourn from directly. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that'll be for uh, uh, reason number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares. Just good. say yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, okay, good. And <laughs> we'll adjourn directly from executive session. So we have to do that by by roll call. So Phil. Yes. And Erica. Yes. And I will say yes too.